we call him Gojira. It's his world. We're all just living in it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're taking a closer look at the Godzilla MonsterVerse in order to better understand this series and what the future holds. <laughs> Godzilla has been entertaining the masses by wreaking havoc on the big screen since 1954, when filmmaker Ishiro Honda unleashed this juggernaut upon the world. Since then, the King of Monsters has become one of the most instantly recognizable pop culture icons in the world, with well over 30 films to his name and counting. He's also an official cultural ambassador to the Shinjuku Ward of Japan. So yeah, the big guy is doing all right for himself. Japanese film production company Toho holds the keys to the kingdom when it comes to Godzilla, and the studio has had a very reserved relationship with Western production companies. In 1998, TriStar released Godzilla directed by Roland Emmerich of Independence Day fame. The film was not well received by critics or audiences, with many classic Godzilla fans outraged that the titular character didn't resemble Godzilla or carry over any of his characteristics at all. He looks angry. After the 98 film, Toho kept Godzilla closer to home in Japan until 2004's Godzilla Final Wars, after which the property laid dormant for a while. But it was only a matter of time until another Western studio took another crack at a version aimed at American audiences. The 2014 film sparked a revival for all things Godzilla, both in the West and in Japan. But we're also living in the post-Marvel Cinematic Universe era, and so seemingly, every tentpole film is also treated as the launchpad for a potential interconnected movie universe. Many have tried and failed spectacularly, but Legendary's MonsterVerse has fared far better than most. Monsters exist. No shit. The first two films alone grossed roughly $500 million each, Meaning that even though Godzilla King of the Monsters hasn't seen the same promising returns, the franchise has arguably already proven itself. Besides, Godzilla vs. Kong is already at the post-production stage, so it's too late to cancel that film. I promise I won't tell the Russians. I promise I will tell the Russians. She's gonna tell the Russians. It should be noted that between the 2014 Godzilla film to now, Toho has also released Shin Godzilla in 2016 and an anime film trilogy on Netflix between 2018 and 2019, starting with Godzilla Planet of the Monsters. Though they all star Godzilla, the four films do not share any continuity with the MonsterVerse. With all that being said, let's dive in. Okay. a lengthy development phase, this cinematic universe kicked off with 2014's Godzilla directed by Gareth Edwards, which introduced us to the most recent incarnation of the creature. Distinguishing itself from Godzilla's past, this iteration dwarfs most of his predecessors. Standing at approximately 355 feet tall, with a tail measuring 550 feet in length, this version of Godzilla truly lives up to his title King of Monsters. In terms of his nature, Legendary's Godzilla, like a more conventional animal, seems disinterested in acts of wanton destruction. He's described as being more of a territorial creature, one that simply views the entirety of Earth as its own. Godzilla's not interested in tearing down cities or chomping on battleships, but if they're in his way or antagonize him, yeah, you might be in trouble. The first time a nuclear submarine ever reached the lower depths, it awakened something. Our first well-documented encounter with Godzilla occurs in 1954, when, after a submarine allegedly woke the creature from its eons-long slumber, accounts vary, an attempt was made by the American military to kill Godzilla at Bikini Atoll using an atomic bomb. Though Godzilla disappeared following the attack, and the masses remained blissfully unaware of his existence, our place in Earth's pecking order had been fundamentally altered in the minds of those involved. And it is gonna send us back to the Stone Age! You have no idea what's coming. Humankind's first instinct was to kill Godzilla, and that was a major mistake, one that thankfully failed. Because, as the events of the 2014 film revealed, Godzilla needn't be seen as a threat. Yes, the creature is a force of destruction, but he's also potentially humankind's only hope against the other, far more antagonistic monsters who slumber around the globe. You see, unfortunately for us tiny little humans, Godzilla is not the only ancient superfauna of its kind. Massive, unidentified terrestrial organisms, or MUDOs for short, are ancient creatures that, quite frankly, make dinosaurs look modest by comparison. The organization we work for, Monarch, 
was established in the wake of this discovery. A multinational coalition formed in secrecy. A single Mudo can pose a major threat to civilization, but with an unknown number of them lying dormant around the world, they collectively pose an extinction-level threat. Recognizing this, an international organization by the name of Monarch was formed in 1946 following an encounter with the lesser-known Mudo Shinomura, as depicted in the tie-in comic Godzilla Awakening. Their apparent mandate? to study, seek out, conceal, contain, and if necessary, destroy Mudos in order to protect humanity. Or as they put it, our mission, discovery and defense in a time of monsters. My agency is known as Monarch. We specialize in the hunt for massive unidentified terrestrial organisms. Though the events of 2014's Godzilla felt like humankind's first real introduction to Godzilla and Mudos, 2017's Kong Skull Island, set in 1973, gave us greater insight into Monarch's history and ongoing efforts following the attack at Bikini Atoll. Directed by Jordan Vote Roberts, the film follows a covert monarch operation to the mysterious Skull Island. Monarch member William Randa's goal is to prove the existence of monsters after having previously survived an encounter with Godzilla, or another creature like it. You heard of the USS Lawton? Neither did the public. Out of a thousand young men on that ship, I was the only survivor. They told my family she was sunk in battle, but I know what I saw. It had no conscience. Here, however, he and his team get far more than they bargained for. As intended, they come in contact with Kong, just Kong this time around, the roughly 104-foot-tall, emotionally intelligent ape and de facto ruler of the island. But what they also discover is a land lost to time, populated by a wide variety of terrifying oversized creatures. Worst among them by far are the skull crawlers, a large predatory species that is the stuff of nightmares. Okay. Look, I just made that name up. I'm trying to scare you. I'm fine calling them that. Are you cool with it? Yeah, that, that seems like a good name. I like the name, so I think you... Never said that name out loud before. It sounds stupid now that I say just... Long story short, Monarch's efforts on Skull Island serve as a harsh lesson in hubris. The silver lining? Like Godzilla, Kong appears to be more interested in maintaining order and keeping other monsters in check than attacking humans. Though Skull Island may have been the end of the line for William Randa, Monarch only continues to grow as an organization in the years to follow, notably moving towards more scientific research over atomic bombs and establishing the hollow earth theory of underwater tunnels linking parts of the earth together in a network. That there are these massive underground spaces isolated from the surface world. Passage waste. Run up, leave this island, maybe one of those. An emergence point for whatever lives below. The film's end credits also serve to tease a major clash of titans in the future. This brings us to 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters, directed by Michael Doherty. The third film in the MonsterVerse, and one that really feels like it's pushing for a strong sense of interconnectivity. With the groundwork laid concerning the theory of Mudos and Godzilla, we learn that Monarch has received a massive funding boost for more elaborate operations, and over the years have located a number of dormant Mudos, which they've been studying extensively. In a solid branding move, they've also rechristened Mudos as Titans, a term which definitely has a better ring to it. So you'd want to make Godzilla our pet? No. We would be his. We learn that our world was once ruled by titans, and that these creatures are fundamental forces of nature. We also learn that ancient civilizations once coexisted with these titans, whom worshipped them as gods and even built temples for their respective deities to rest in. Furthermore, the Hollow Earth theory is confirmed, with one point being discovered at the doorstep of an ancient underwater city, indicating that these civilizations may have had access to long-distance travel across the planet. It could be argued that the Titans serve as a regulatory system of sorts, living extinction events, if need be, that maintain order and planetary health by means of their inherent destructive capabilities. Given that Toho's OG Godzilla was an allegory on nuclear devastation, and how we theorized that King Ghidorah was an allegory on extreme weather destruction caused by climate change in a previous video, it's likely some of the other Titans introduced here are also representations of an apocalyptic scenario that could bring forth an extinction-level event. It would explain why these civilizations no longer exist. Our planet will perish, and so will we. So, let's take a look at some of the new players in King of the Monsters names which are sure to ring a bell with fans of the Toho Godzilla movies. Mothra is the first one introduced as one of the titans that Monarch has been studying most closely. Known by the scientific name Titanus Mosura, 
The giant winged creature can bring catastrophe, but it also seems notably gentle by nature, given that she chose to subdue her captives rather than killing them in her larva stage. There's also been foreshadowing that twin doctors Eileen and Ling Chen may have a greater connection to Mothra, equivalent to that of the Shobijin from the Toho films, perhaps as the link of communication between humanity and the Titans? <laughs> Next up is Rodan, who again requires little introduction. Titanus Rodan was first discovered by Monarch in 1991 in the Isla de Mata volcano where he lay dormant. It could be said that his body is a living volcano due to his internal volcanic combustion, which causes his body to emit extreme heat. Despite the creature's incredible size and weight, it is remarkably agile, being able to match the speed of fighter jets, and the downward thrust from his wings can reduce cities to rubble. Rodan. The fire demon. That's comforting. Last but not least is King Ghidorah, Godzilla's greatest adversary, with power so destructive that most ancient civilizations either chose to keep little record of him, or few survived his encounter to tell the tale. A three-headed creature reminiscent of the Hydra of ancient mythology, Ghidorah is distinct from Godzilla in that it appears to be a creature that, for whatever reason, is inherently driven to commit destructive acts. At over 500 feet tall, Ghidorah dwarfs even Godzilla, and wherever he flies, he brings with him the most destructive storm known to mankind. Oh, shit. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Alright, back to business. For those of you who have seen the film, don't expect the monsters that did die here to be down for the count, as both the end credits and a post credit scene hint at their return for future titles. While Godzilla King of the Monsters has been noticeably less well-received than the past two films, there's no denying that Legendary has put a lot of world-building into this franchise. Now, the stage is set for Godzilla vs. Kong to hit theaters in March 2020, though it won't be the first time these two icons of cinema have met on the big screen. Still, there is a lot riding on the upcoming film to succeed, as Warner Brothers and Legendary have not committed to any other films in the MonsterVerse after Godzilla vs. Kong. But even if 2020 marks the end of the MonsterVerse, Toho has their own Godzilla cinematic universe in the works, codenamed World of Godzilla, set for launch in 2021. Ain't that a testament to Godzilla's legacy? Long live the king. Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.